Hey, fellas. How you doing? So, <clears throat> I don't know why I put this video up at the time I'm putting it up. I really don't. Because I'm recording it in advance because I know there have been times... I mean, I'd like to do... Ma I do magic content on my YouTube channel. You know, it's either that or I start talking about politics or battle tech. And most of the people that are subscribed to my channel are there for magic. You know? Though I have to say one thing that uh, blew my mind one time is... Um, I don't know if they're still subscribed or not, but uh, Cinevore Films subscribe to my channel. Uh, for those that don't know who they are, um, they're the same group. They're a group that's affiliated with the Angry Video Game Nerd, aka James Rolfe. I hope I haven't completely hacked his last name on that one. Um, but uh, yeah, that was that was kind of a mind blow. There, I'm like, really? They subscribe to me? Why, why would they do such a thing? Maybe it's because they... Th I mean, these guys are... Th that, this particular group, they're a bunch of, like, um, movie slash, you know, video editing, blah, 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 nerds, group, uh, geeks, nuts, whatever. And, you know, I'm not going to ever, ever, ever say that you're wrong for being passionate about your hobbies. I mean, me? Me of all people? No. No, I will not say that. Not when I've been playing Magic the Gathering since, like, late 94, and I have more than my body weight in Magic cards. No, I'm not going to say that to anybody. It's cool. It's, it's cool. It's all right to be passionate about your hobbies. It's all right to be obsessive about your hobbies. You know, it, it's all right to make your hobby part of your identity, blah, 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 blah. But I still have no idea why the hell they subscribe to my channel. Uh, I don't know. But whatever. Whatever. I'd have to double-check, see if they're still subscribed. That just blew my mind when it happened. But anyways. Uh, this deck. Um, obviously it's not in sleeves at this particular moment. It should be, but it's not. Um, this is a deck that I've... I, I've only... I've had this deck for years upon years. Oh, at least a good... Nine, ten years, probably more. Um, actually, no, a lot more than... I don't know. Was it a lot more? Um... Uh, well, let me see. Bup, bup, bup. Going back, I've had this deck since, at the very least, sometime in early 2003, at the latest. I mean, the absolute latest. Um, so, yeah, I've had this deck at least a good ten years. Um, and it's seen a handful of modifications every now and again. Not often, but it gets them. Um, and it's only in the past, recently, you know, has it picked up a nickname. Um, I've referred to this deck now as the Blue Bastard, because it's a bastard. It's just such a bastard. Now, for those of you who, are who can recognize some of the cards, you already know that it's a horrible bastard deck, because right there we got Stasis. Over here with some counter spells. I mean, old school counter spell, double blue instant counter target spell. And you can tell they're old because they have the word interrupt on them. Uh, that's an Ice Age printing. That's a... Copyright 1994? I'm sorry, 95? Um, that would make it a 4th edition printing? Yeah, 4th edition printing. If it said copyright 1994, that would be worth right, incredible money because that would make it summer magic. That would be nuts. Those things go for a lot. Um, anyways, um, my mono base. I've got uh, 17 islands, 4 remote isles. They come to play tapped. They tap for blue mana. I can pay 2 colors to cycle it. That is, discard it and draw a card. If it's in my hand, I can pay 2. Pitch it, draw a card. All well and good. Um, honestly, I should probably uh, replace those with uh, some of, I believe it's the Onslaught block uh, cycling lands. Um, which cost one mana of a specific color to cycle. So, for example, their version would just be blue cycle. More mana efficient, really. But, I haven't gotten around to it. Four Sapphire Charms. They're kind of beat. Obviously, heavy, pl heavily played condition. White around the edges of the card, because they've been played. Uh... Each one reduces the cost of my blue spells by... One colorless. It's nice. Very nice. Does fuck. 
Now, first of all, let's get to let's go with defense on this deck because it's defense is pretty much all counter spell based. Uh, two classic counter spells. Four dismiss, two colors, double blue, instant counter spell, draw a card. Very nice. Rewinds! Two colors, double blue, counter spell, untap up to four lands. Don't necessarily have to be your own, but they usually will be. Power Sinks. I'm using a mix of Tempest and Mirage Printings X Blue Counter Target Spell unless its controller pays X. Um, and empty that player's mana pool. That player must uh, tap lands in an effort to pay it anyway, blah 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 blah. The idea is you're forcing your opponent to tap out, tap down uh, lands. Which goes nice with stasis! Colors in a blue enchantment. Uh, during your upkeep, pay blue or sacrifice stasis. All players skip their untap steps. Oh yeah, that's that's evil. That's evil. Um, place at a cap size. Colors double blue, instant, buyback to three. Um, that is if you pay the buyback cost when you cast cap size as part of the spell's effect, it returns itself to your hand. Uh, and cap size returns target permanent to its owner's hand, so I can just, like, put something back in your hand. I'll get back to this little bad boy later on something. Um, Wizard Mentor, 2 and a blue, 2-2. Two, two. Tap to return himself and target creature you control to owner's hands. Peregrine Drake, uh, 4 and a blue, 2-3 two, flying. When it hits the board, untap up to 5 lands. Um, printed in Urza's block where... Untapping land, untapping the lands you uh, uh, was a thing. Rewind was in Urza's block as well as Palantron. It's a uh, five and double blue for a four-five flyer. When it hits the board, untap up to seven land, and you can pay two and double blue to return him to your hand. Um, four high tides, three different illustration, fallen empires, single blue to cast, instant. Uh, Islands you control produce an additional blue when tapped for mana until end of turn. Two Brain Geysers, X blue blue, sorcery target player draws X cards. Stroke of Genius, X two calls in a blue, instant target player draws X cards. Blue Sun's Zenith, X triple blue, instant target player draws uh, X cards. Shuffle Blue Sun's Zenith back into the deck. Okay, so I think I've covered all the cards here. Now, the battery on the camera is low, so I'm going to set it back up to charge, and then I'm going to explain how this deck actually wins. And believe it or not, it's not by turning stuff sideways. Alrighty, so let's get back to this deck. How does it win? How does it win? Now, you can turn creatures sideways with this deck to win. You really can. You really can. But that wasn't the original idea behind the deck. Um, <clears throat> so let's go with my primary win condition. So let's say this is my board state. I've got five islands and a sapphire medallion. And I should have left something else in there. In that pile of stuff. And I forgot to. Oops. It's alright. I'll dig one up real quick. Where's what I'm after? There we go. Okay, so, here we go. I tap an island. I play high tide. It resolves. I, until end of turn, all islands I control produce, produce an additional blue and tap for mana. There's eight mana. Palancron costs me six because of Sapphire Medallion. I've got two mana floating. I untap up to seven lands. There's five. I tap them again for ten mana. I've got twelve mana floating. I use four of it to return Palantron to my hand. I recast him for six, two floating on tap that. Now, obviously, at this point, I'm just breaking even. Just breaking even. I'm always going to have that two, mon two blue mana floating around. Pardon me. And so I'm just breaking even at this point. Now, that would be great if I had a two-cost card that had Storm, that is, uh, for each spell played this turn, uh, put a copy of this card on the stack. But I don't. 
I don't have any strong cards in the deck. So you might be asking, why is this part of a win condition? The key is, is at this point, all I need to start turning a profit is another Sapphire Medallion to reduce his cost, at which point I'll be getting an extra mana per turn. An extra land. Doesn't matter if it's an island or a remote island, I'll be getting extra that one extra mana every time I go through this cycle. Or a second high tide. At that point, I'm building more mana than I'm using doing this loop. Which is pretty saucy. So I effectively can generate any amount of mana I want. Brain Geyser. X blue blue. Target player draws X cards. Now, let me put the camera down for a second because I have something I need to attend to off to the side. There we go. As I say, <coughs> target player, I make you draw your. Uh, I've generated with this combo, doing it, uh, looping it over and over again, I've generated billions of mana. Brain Geyser, draw six million cards. I don't care. Draw your whole deck and then keep drawing. Oh, wait, you can't. That causes you to lose the game. Yay, I win! <laughs> yes, indeed. So there's that, right? Plus, now I've got a second Brain Geyser in the deck. Plus there's Blue Sun Zenith and Stroke of Genius, which both do the pretty much the same thing with slightly different cost and at instant speed instead of sorcery. And that'll do the same thing. I win. Yay! Or, if that's not good enough, if that's not good enough, I'll just cast Capsize with Buyback over and over and over again using this arbitrarily large amount of mana I can generate. I'll return all of your permanents to your hand. Did you know that lands are permanents? Put your lands back in your hand. You're done. At which point, it's just like, hey, guess what? Every time you play a land, I'm going to capsize with buyback on it. It goes back to your hand. Meanwhile, Palancron is swinging for four. You're on a five-turn clock, and you can't do anything. That's pretty saucy. Pretty saucy. So yeah, that's that's a couple of little uh, fun win conditions there. Uh, another thing I have with this deck... Okay, check it out. Here's another board state. Yay, board states! I've got... <coughs> okay, maybe I should put it on an extra line. Alright, let's say this is my board state. I've got five islands, two Saffron Medallions. I type an island. I play stasis. I tap an island. I play wizard mentor. He's two and a blue. That discounts him by one each. Yay. He hits the board. I tap three. I play peregrine drake. I untap five lands. There's all my land back. Next turn. Untap is skipped because of stasis. Upkeep, I pay blue or sacrifice stasis. There's the blue. Peregrine Drake, whoops, swings. Two points of flying damage. Bam, eat it. Eat it and tell me it's tasty. Yum, 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 yum. Two points of damage in the air. I tap Wizard Mentor to return target creature I control and itself to owner's hand. They're both back in my hand. I tap blue. I replay Wizard Mentor. I tap three. I replay Peregrine Drake. I untap five lands. Oh, look, there's all five of my lands. I can keep Stasis out indefinitely. Plus, every turn I'm also drawing a card during my draw step. So I'm eventually also going to have more land and be able to do stuff. Meanwhile, you're skipping your untap. You can't do anything. I'm slapping you in the face for two damage a turn in the air. Worst case scenario, I can't swing with the Peregrine Drake. So what? I can still bounce him and replay him doesn't matter. I'm keeping stasis out indefinitely. Eventually, one of us is going to be able to break the stasis lock, and it's probably going to be is going to be able to break the stasis lock. That is to say, one of us is probably going to be... <laughs> heavens forbid it, and this is where it gets awesome. Not only is one of us going to be able to uh, do start doing things, it's probably going to be me. Yeah. Another fun thing, of course, about this, let's say I don't have these two guys. 
say I don't. Let's put us up to six land, just for sake of argument. Bam! I play stasis. I pass turn. End of your turn. Actually, no, I don't need that extra line, do I? No, I don't. I don't need the extra line. Okay. Forget that. I play stasis. End of your turn. There's four mana. Capsize. I choose to play with buyback. Three, four, five. It costs me six mana. That discounts it by two. That discounts it by two. That means it only costs me four. There's my four. I play capsize with buyback. Targeting stasis. Stasis comes back to my hand. Capsize, when it resolves, comes back to my hand because I paid the buyback cost. Those are in my hand. My turn. On tap. Upkeep. Draw. Whatever I draw. Island. Tap that for mana. There's stasis back. I can keep stasis in play indefinitely. Well, it's not really staying in play, but rather it's going to be a, it's always going to be around and deny you your untap. That's pretty nasty. Plus, of course, I'm packing 4, 8, 12, 14 counter spells in the deck. Shoot. There we go. Had a lamb turn upside down in there. I knew it. I could feel it as I was picking it up. <coughs> there we go. So 14 counter spells. Two ways to keep stasis on the board and port it pretty much indefinitely. Um, Palancron, high tide, mana generating combo that I can use to make you draw out your deck or return all your stuff to your hand. Is it any wonder that I refer to the deck as the Blue Bastard? No, it's not. It's really not. Deck needs sleeves. <laughs> I don't play this deck very often because it's not really a fun deck to play against. It's an amazing deck to see in operation every now and again. But it's just not fun for most people to play against. Like most of my control decks, it's not fun to play against. It's awesome to watch it go off once or twice, but after that it gets boring real fast. Really fast. So I don't play it much. That's life, though. I mean, it's, it's one of those things. Magic is a social game. Part of the game is to have fun. And if I'm locking you out of the game, that's not fun. So, I don't play deck. I don't play any of my control decks more than once or twice in a row, especially if they work, because it's not fun to play against. I mean, it's great to play it and show off and say, yeah, I'm a bastard. But, you know, it's a, yeah, it's a ba I'm a bastard, here's this, here's that, blah, 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 blah. Now, mind you, the Palantron High Tide uh, Stroke of Genius combo, that was in standard at one point in time. Yeah, that was in standard. Well, we called it Type 2 back in the day, but whatever. It was in standard, you know? So that, uh, that was, that, ooh, that was so painful for people. Me included. I, I was on the receiving end of it before. It wasn't fun and happy. Believe you me, it was not fun and happy. But, 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 but. I mean, so yeah, that that's that's a combo I copied off. But you know, the keeping stasis out indefinitely a couple of different ways. That's that's just fun. That that's my own little bit bit of fun. I've never seen anyone else pull that. I've never seen anyone else try it. I've never heard of anyone else pulling it or trying it. So there's that. Um, once again, it's it, it, it's a great deck for being a bastard, locking people down. And it's fun to play once or twice, but you don't want to play it over and over again because it's it's just not fun to play against. And and I'm waving the battery charger around like like it's a baton and I'm some kind of damn conductor. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so there's a deck, guys. There's a deck. Um, I can't really recommend copying it. Some of those cards are kind of hard to come by and expensive even when you can come by them. So... You know, take that with a, uh, a grain of salt, blah, blah, blah. If you want to proxy it up and give it a shot and see what you think of it, go, go, go for it. But you didn't hear me say that. Wizards of the Coast doesn't like people proxying stuff. I mean, if you're proxying up out of print stuff, which pretty much all of this is, it doesn't really matter because it's not money out of Wizards' pocket. So they'll usually turn a blind eye to it. It's just like there's a lot of... Uh, 
Type 1 tournaments out there are, uh, I can't remember if the proper terminology is these days is, uh, <coughs> blarred, brain fart. I can't remember if the proper terminology for type, for what we used to call type 1 is, uh, vintage or legacy, I can't remember which. But, um, there are plenty of places that for vintage, and for, for type 1 tournaments, you can proxy Power 9 if you want, because they're so hard to come by. You know? For those that don't know Power 9, we're talking about the original five uh, boxes, Black Lotus, uh, Time Twister, Time Walk, and Ancestral Recall. Because those are all stupidly powerful effects. And there are some people that don't know what I'm talking about when I mention those cards. Um, the boxes are all zero casting cost artifacts that uh, cost one... Uh, that uh, zero cost artifacts that tap for one specific color of mana. For example, uh, Box Ruby taps for red mana. The idea being is this lets you get around... Uh, it sort of lets you circumvent that whole uh, one land per turn limit. Because now you can have... Oh, look, I have two mana available on turn one. Which is pretty cool. I mean, e even in decks that don't have any use for the uh, other colors of mana, they'll run them anyway because it's, it's nothing else that's colorless. You know? Um, Black Lotus, the zero drop artifact, you tap and sacrifice it for three mana of one color of your choice. Um, Time Twister is everyone is like I want to say it's like two mana. It's a blue card. I want to say it's a colorless and a blue. And everyone shuffles their hands, graveyards, and libraries together and draws a new hand. Oh yeah, that's that gets crazy when you you know oh I pop Black Lotus and I do this that and the other and then I Time Twister and I get everything back, including Time Twister. I think. I have to double check. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of crazy too. Um, Ancestral Recall, a single blue mana to draw three cards. <laughs> Hello. And there was a Time Walk as a, like a colorless and a blue, if I recall correctly, to take an extra turn after this one. Okay. Oh, you want to let me like take an extra turn for two mana? <laughs> yeah, that's not broken. That's horrible broken. Heavens forbid it's powerful at five for time war uh, for not time for uh, the time warp originally from uh, Tempest Block, which in and of itself is also a reference to the name itself is a reference to the Rocky Horror Picture Show, which is a really cute movie. Um, it's not a movie you need to take seriously. If you take the movie seriously, you're not going to enjoy it. I mean, but it's like that for any basically you know any movie that's pretty much a musical. Don't don't take musicals seriously. You're not going to get far with it. Um, like the South Park movie. <laughs> Alrighty. Battery's almost out. I've covered what I need to cover. I'll catch you around, fellas. Be good. Stay safe. Happy gaming. Etc. Etc.